the world's many household appliances, one stands out as a Japanese original. This rare example of an item invented and perfected in Japan that remains a global pace setter is the electric rice cooker. In around 1960, rice cookers became explosively popular in Japanese homes. Today, Japan exports about 400,000 each year. The Japanese just love freshly steamed rice. That craving drove the evolution of the rice cooker into a high-tech appliance. Rice cookers can do more than just cook rice. Homemakers have begun using them in surprising ways. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is rice cookers. We'll investigate the challenges that were overcome in developing them and the creativity that the Japanese have lavished on making and using them. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Rice, as I'm sure many people know, is the staple food of Japan. And every household in Japan has a rice cooker. Not that I've counted, but you just take it for granted that that's the case. Now, in case you've never seen a rice cooker, or if you don't know how one works, let me just show you very briefly. This is the cooker and this is the pot that goes inside it. You take your rice, wash it, and put in the correct amount of water, put it all in the pot like this, that's really all you have to do. You open up the rice cooker, load the pot in, close it up again and hit the start button. That's it. There's a saying in Japan, even if the baby cries, keep the lid on the rice pot. That's how scrupulous Japanese people were about cooking their rice properly. The only trouble is that if the lid's on the pot, you can't see what's underneath it, so you're not absolutely sure how the rice is progressing. And this posed a problem for the inventors of the first electric rice cooker. Before the electric rice cooker came along, rice was cooked in wood-fired clay stoves. It was hard to control the heat with these stoves, and they required constant attention. Cooking rice was really hard work for housewives, the people who usually made a family's meals. In the age before electric appliances, Japanese housewives spent more than seven hours a day on household chores that also included laundry and cleaning. Could the power of electricity be used to relieve the burden on these women? A first attempt was made in the 1920s. This is one of the first electric rice cookers ever made. Just a metal pot with an electrical fitting. You had to be right there the entire time the rice cooked, turning off the switch when the pot boiled over, then turning it back on again after it settled. It wasn't much easier than using a clay stove. Naturally, sales were poor, and manufacturers weren't especially motivated to develop new versions of the electric rice cooker. But then in 1953, Yoshitada Minami got down to work on the development of an automatic electric rice cooker. He was the president of a small factory that made products as a subcontractor to bigger manufacturers. To cook delicious rice, the water inside the pot must first be heated to boiling point, and the heat must be sustained for around 20 minutes until it is turned off. But the time it takes water to boil varies with air temperature and how warm the water is. There could be no fixed number of minutes for heating. Then an employee researching appliance manufacturing came up with a bimetallic strip. Two metal plates with different thermal expansion coefficients stuck together. Using this, it was possible to create a switch that cut off the electricity at a certain temperature. The switch is installed on the bottom of the pot. The cooker has a nested arrangement of a pot within a pot. The idea is to pour between the pots an amount of water that will fully boil away in 20 minutes. Once the water has boiled away and the outer pot's temperature hits 100 degrees Celsius, the heat causes the bimetallic strip to bend, automatically shutting off the electricity 20 minutes after the water comes to a boil. 
Minami's prototype was tested by his wife, Fumiko. She battled away cooking rice all day long. Minami made various revisions to the appliance. And after he finished each prototype, Fumiko would use it to cook rice up on the roof, under the eaves, and in various other conditions. It's said that she did as many as 20 tests a day. Once, when testing a unit in a freezing cold garden, she actually collapsed. The experiments revealed something unexpected. In cold surroundings, the switch would sometimes cut off even when the temperature inside the pot had not reached 100 degrees. For months, the Minamis continued making and testing prototypes, trying to create a switch that would work regardless of ambient temperature. A year into the development, Minami finally got a valuable tip. He heard that in the coldest parts of Japan, people would cover their wood-fired clay stoves with tin plate or galvanized iron. He quickly came up with a triple-nested pot design, trapping a layer of air around the pot to serve as an insulator. Now the switch was shielded from ambient temperature. He experimented in an ice storage space at 10 degrees below zero. The result? Perfectly cooked rice. The hard work of husband and wife had paid off. And so, in 1955, the automatic electric rice cooker went on sale. The price was 3,200 yen, one-third of a month's salary for an average office worker at that time. Even so, four years later, half of Japan's households had one. The appliance succeeded in greatly reducing the housework burden for Japanese women. Well, that sounds like it's done. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Isn't that all nice and shiny and fluffy? They have an expression in Japanese, the rice is standing up, and I, th I think you can probably tell that it is. Okay, we've got to try some, haven't we? Let's, there we go. Just a little bit, and my chopsticks. Mm. Mm. The firmness is just right, and it has that just boiled quality to it. The thing is, that if you cook your rice in one of these, you're pretty much certain that it's going to turn out nice, and people take that for granted now. But in the days before they had rice cookers, you never knew. Sometimes your rice would turn out hard inside, or it might get burned, or it might be gooey, even though it was something that you'd be cooking every day. So cooking was a bit of a hit-or-miss affair back in those days. With the invention of the rice cooker, of course, Japanese women were then freed to get out of the house more and go into society. And the rice cooker also changed people's lifestyles, and it changed their way of eating. And that led to the addition of a new function that was added to the rice cooker, which is this the keep warm button. In the 1960s, Japan was in the middle of a period of high economic growth. A husband doing a desk job would work overtime and get home late. And so would the wife if she worked full-time or had a part-time job. Families often couldn't eat dinner all at the same time, so electric rice cookers needed to offer new functions. And a key role was played by a manufacturer of vacuum flasks. The heat-retaining technology developed for vacuum flasks was applied to a new type of rice cooker that could keep rice warm electrically. The electric vacuum flask, launched in 1970, with the sole function of keeping rice warm, became an instant hit. Two years later, an electric vacuum flask rice cooker went on sale. This fused the cooking and warming functions. Now, once it was cooked, warm rice could be enjoyed at any time. Electric rice cooker makers began working on the next challenge. How could rice be cooked even more deliciously? 
Back in about 1980, the electric rice cooker had a major rival, the gas rice cooker, which offered the key advantage of heating power. Compared to electricity, a gas rice cooker could heat faster using a stronger heat source, and it was popularly known to cook fluffier rice. Manufacturers of electric rice cookers searched for a new heat source to compete with gas. And their attention was drawn to induction heating, or IH for short. IH was invented in 1971 in the US as a heat source for cooking. Inside the heating element is a round coil. When a current is passed through the coil, it generates a high-frequency magnetic field that heats the pot itself. IH was revolutionary because it has a higher thermal efficiency than a conventional heating element and can heat up much faster. So manufacturers decided to incorporate IH into electric rice cookers. The problem was that IH would not heat a traditional aluminium pot. But using steel or stainless steel, which IH can heat, resulted in uneven cooking. What engineers came up with to make even heating possible was this pot. It was made from two materials, an outer shell of stainless steel, which IH heats, and an inner sheet of aluminium which offers excellent heat transfer properties. The idea was that heat generated by the stainless steel would pass to the aluminium to be distributed around the entire pot. But when it was tested, the rice was still unevenly cooked. Once again, a hint came from the old-fashioned wood-fired clay stoves. In these stoves, the flames enveloped the pot all the way to the rim. So engineers installed an IH coil in the sides of the cooker, as well as the bottom. Finally, the problem of uneven cooking was solved. IH vacuum flask electric rice cookers hit the shelves in 1988 and soon drove out the rival gas rice cookers. This is a major appliance and electronics store in Akihabara. Now, you'd think that a rice cooker would be a fairly generic thing, but think again. They have literally dozens of different kinds here, all different sizes, depending on how much rice you want to cook, and a really wide price range as well, depending on the functions. The most expensive ones go up to over 100,000 yen. There's some that have charcoal and clay pots. One even uses ultrasound. The variations are apparently endless. What do you think this is? For the really lazy person, these propeller blades actually wash the rice for you. And this one's a bit special as well. Normally, steam is a byproduct of cooking rice, but this one produces no steam at all. And the reason is that it has a water tank in here, so it acts like a kind of dehumidifier. Japanese rice cookers are also popular for export, and they have a section here featuring models that are designed to operate at 220, 230 volts, and that covers quite a lot of countries around the world. I'm going to talk to one of the sales clerks here. Hello. Um, which nationalities are these models most popular with? Oh, the Chinese. I see from your name tag that you're Mr. Q. Are you Chinese as well? Yes, I'm from Fujian, China. Which models are particularly popular with Chinese tourists? This one's the most popular. It's a pressure rice cooker. That's pretty expensive. I'm a little surprised. I would have thought that foreign travelers probably would go for the cheaper models somehow. Well, they're willing to pay extra because Japanese products are superior. And they prefer high-end models that have more features and can be used for a long time. Are rice cookers available in China as well? Yes, but Japanese rice cookers can keep rice warm for about 24 hours. With Chinese ones, rice starts to get hard after three or four hours or so, I hear. On average, how many of these do you sell in a day? We sell about 20 on weekdays and about 30 on busy weekends. Thank you very much.
It goes without saying that rice cookers were originally designed to cook tasty rice, but with the advent of the rice cooker, rice itself is now starting to get transformed. A rice shop in Tokyo's Meguro Ward. Hello, welcome to my shop. What kind of rice are you looking for today? What kind of rice cooker do you have? Here they stock about 65 different types of rice from around Japan. They will choose rice for you to suit your taste preferences and your rice cooker. Because today's rice cookers are so advanced, the heat output is high, and if the small rice grains aren't uniform in size, the rice turns to glue. You get a sticky paste that's not evenly cooked. This is Toyozo Nishijima, the shop's owner. He's been working on a project for the last few years. He's working with farmers to grow new varieties of rice that are optimized for the latest electric rice cookers. Today's rice cookers are very high performance, so the good and bad features of the rice are really clear. That's easiest to see with large grain rice. A farm in Chiba. They grow large grain rice in this paddock. The rice that grows here is not a special variety, but each step in farming, from tilling to fertilizing to crop management to harvesting, is optimized to yield larger grains than you see in conventional rice. I used to grow about 18 rice plants per square meter. I cut that down to 15 per square meter, so they aren't as densely packed. That encourages the development of larger grains. This allows each rice plant to absorb more nutrients and the rice grains grow firmly. Here is the rice. Each grain is 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters larger than a typical rice grain. This slight difference is enough to prevent cracking or deformation under the strong heat and pressure of the latest rice cookers. So each grain ends up plump. The size of the grain is in the 1.75 millimeter to 2 millimeter range, a difference of tenths of a millimeter. So it may not look like a big difference numerically, but when consumers actually cook and eat that rice, they can easily tell the difference. With large grain, healthily grown rice, when you chew it, you can feel the plumpness of the grains. And as you chew, the sweetness of the rice fills your mouth. The rice really stands up well, and when you eat it, you can tell how big the grains are, and they're big. We've tried a lot of different kinds of rice here, and we became able to tell the difference. The rice has a nice sheen to it. The texture is very good, sticky, just how we like it. And that's why my wife tells me to buy rice here. Nishijima is working with 36 farmers around Japan to grow rice with larger grains. The thing I really want you to know is how the latest rice cookers work. Plump rice is the easiest to cook in them and comes out looking great. We certainly get a lot of repeat customers. Does that mean people buy based on the grain and not the variety? Yes, based on size and gloss. Large grain rice can sometimes command more than 10 times the price of ordinary rice. It's a new business opportunity for farmers. The evolution of the electric rice cooker has not only changed the lifestyle of consumers, it's also changing the way rice is grown. In the old days, you switched on your rice cooker and you waited for the rice to cook. These days, it's not quite so simple. So I'm going to talk to the rice cooker specialist here at the store, Mr. Yasuyuki Katsuta. Hello, welcome to the program. Thank you, and welcome to our store. Now, this is the top-of-the-line model, and it doesn't come cheap, so there has to be a lot about it that's special. Tell us about it. Well, first of all, the temperature for cooking rice. The stronger the heat, the better the rice tastes. Till now, the best they could do was 110, 120 degrees Celsius, but this one can do 300. Yes. If you go to a nice Japanese restaurant, there will be a pot like this, 
at your table with a lid like this. Oh, it actually comes with a lid as well. <laughs> yes, so you can have as much rice as you want when you want it. All nice and warm. <laughs> Fiendishly clever. And this one comes with a really pretty wide range of um, different... I mean, you can have your rice rare, medium rare, medium, sort of well done. Uh, all of these you can have, what? Um, you can do porridge, you can do sushi rice. How does it do all these things? All these features allow you not just to cook rice, but to enjoy rice on a whole new level. The researchers work together with chefs, those who cook rice professionally. They tried to emulate the chef's cooking styles and came up with all these different modes. Hmm. Well, it's all pretty impressive. The manufacturers come up with all these features and then the users think of even more things to do with the features. Let's take a look. Yoshiko Abe is a housewife living in Shibuya Ward in Tokyo. She has been working on recipes using electric rice cookers. In the last 12 years, she has come up with more than 400 recipes. The morning is a busy time for housewives. You have to get everybody ready and make breakfast. And that's when the rice cooker can be your friend. So let's make the rice, main dish and miso soup all in one go. First, add the right amount of rice and water. Then the main dish goes in a heat-resistant container and is covered with aluminium foil. If you just pop the container in, rice will get trapped underneath it. So twist it around a bit, like this. The container of miso soup is placed in the pot in the same way. Finally, an uncooked egg is added. Now she pushes the cook button. Twenty minutes later, How does it look inside? The miso soup, the main dish, and of course the rice look well cooked and appetizing. Rice, hamburger steak, simmered vegetables, miso soup, and a hard boiled egg cooked all at once. Next, let's look at a usually time consuming dish braised pork belly. The key here is to stew the pork chunks until they're tender. In a regular pot, that takes more than five hours. First, place chunks of pre-boiled pork in the rice cooker. There's no particular way to do this. Just toss them in. Next, the other ingredients and seasonings are poured into the rice cooker. So I'm going to use the brown rice setting. The brown rice cooking function heats the food more gradually than the normal setting and allows a longer time for cooking. In just 40 minutes, the braised pork belly is ready. Using a rice cooker reduces time and effort, but even so, the output is this tender, glistening pork. The next recipe is pasta with a bolognese sauce. Ground meat, finely chopped carrots, and canned whole tomatoes go into the pot. Then spaghetti is broken in half and added. Spread out the pasta so it lies flat. Finally, pour in some olive oil and you're set to go. Close the lid, then set it to quick cook. This time the setting is quick cook, which uses high pressure to speed up the cooking process. That enables the cooker to deal with the pasta. Ta-da! A hearty, meaty, tomato-rich pasta in meat sauce. The pasta even comes out nicely al dente. Now let's bake a cake in the rice cooker. 
I'm going to pour in chocolate cake batter. Because of the anti-stick fluorine coating, you don't need to coat the pot with butter or anything first. Here again, she uses the quick cook setting. In just 20 minutes, the cake is done. So the latest rice cookers can even be used as an oven. The rings on the bottom of the pot are imprinted on the cake, but it actually looks nice. You can make sponge cakes and bread as well. Here's another amazing rice cooker recipe. I'll make creme caramel. Pour in the liquid, put the lid on, and then place it in this hot water. And we use the keep warm setting. Twenty minutes later, the creme caramel is done. Let's open it. Ooh, look how nicely it came out. A rice cooker's keep warm setting can substitute for a steamer. It can even be used to make yogurt and tofu. Just look at all the things you can make in a rice cooker. The electric rice cooker was developed to reduce the burden of housework. But these days, it's turning into a way to make cooking fun. It's amazing how creative people can get, isn't it? You go out to buy a rice cooker and it's sold as a rice cooker, not as some machine that cooks everything else under the sun. But apparently there are some 20,000 recipes floating around these days, improvised by housewives for the rice cooker. Of course, we have one at home too, although ours must be at least 10 years old. And if they don't break down, you don't go out to buy a new one. So quite honestly, today is the first time that I've looked at rice cookers in any kind of detail for years. I'm just blown away by how far they've evolved. I'll see you again next time. There are ancient burial mounds in Japan that rival the Egyptian pyramids in scale. Now, high-tech devices are helping to shed new light on their fascinating secrets and the roots of Japan itself.